everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And today we're going to a place that I've never been, Silicon Valley. Um, I know everyone there's rich, I guess. That's every, everybody is That's rich. That's where they produce the silicone in the world, all of it, right? I don't know, I just know there's startups and stuff, but I mean, it's definitely talked about a lot. It's in movies, yeah. and everyone talks about Silicon Valley. And that's what this game is about. You are an entrepreneur there, and you're trying to start up products, and also just polyominoes. As in real life. That's yeah. blocks of code, Tom. Blocks of code. All right, well, let's take a look. Wendy's going to show us how to play, and we'll be right back. Silicon Valley is about becoming the best startup. So you want to be the first to reach $1 billion valuation for your company. And the way you're gonna do that is you're going to make these cool items over here and you're gonna write code, you're gonna sell your code, you're gonna hire employees, you're gonna expand your headquarters, you're gonna do a lot of cool stuff so that you can reach that $1 billion. Let's start with round structure. So we have the round structure over here. Um, in the very first phase, people are going to be taking action. So you get basically three action points or three actions on your turn. Um, everyone's gonna take those and then we'll move to the operation of their companies. So your company's over here. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to gain all the cool benefits that are ongoing throughout the game, but then you're also going to be paying all the costs and those are here in yellow. So you have to pay for your employees, you have to pay for your overhead and those kind of things. Then after you've gained everything that you're going to gain and you've paid all that you need to pay, then you're going to check the value of your company and based on whoever has the lowest value to the highest value will determine player order for the next round. Next, let's talk about the actions that we can take. So let's go ahead and start here with employees. So you can purchase employees for what's at the bottom and then there's an ongoing cost. There's also some discounts if they like the kind of office that you work in. Hey, we have good work-life balance. Come join our team. They're more likely to get hired for less hiring on bonuses. They also give you these cool little polyominoes. Um, there's instant and ongoing benefits, so your employees will continue to make code, and that's what these polyominoes are. They are code that is being written. So you add them to your headquarters, and then they have future costs as it goes along. Next, you can expand your headquarters. And so the way you do that is you buy one of these cards and then you can expand right here. This allows you to gain more employees and it also allows you to put out more products or hold more products. If you need money, you can use these VC cards over here. And basically what you're doing is you're selling some codes. So you're selling code quickly for quick money and some sort of additional benefit. There's also discounts for the length of code that you need um, are these little hexagons over here. Also, if there's code that your people are not making but you do want, this is outsource coding, so you're basically hiring other people from different companies to you know, give you a two piece of code that uh, fits your nice little requirements. Now you may be wondering, what do I need with all that code? Well, let me show you. So up here, these are the products that you actually want to invent and produce. And so all of these lines of codes that you're having your employees write or you're outsourcing, you're going to be using them to fill in these little polyomino grids. Now, once you do, if you're the very first person, you get the innovator token, you've got instant benefits on the left and ongoing benefits on the right. However, if someone else comes in and they write the exact same code, meaning that they're using the exact same polyominoes you are, they get the second benefit. They get an instant reward as well as an ongoing, and then you will actually flip over your benefit because it's not worth as much. Someone else can make it. Now these things will slot over here on your headquarters and as you can see, this is how many products that you can hold. So as you expand your HQ, you can hold more things. Um, these you also can take an action to get rid of. Now if you ever choose to get rid of a product line or you choose to get rid of an employee because they do get more expensive throughout the game, um, if you ever choose to do that, you lose victory points or you lose valuation on your company because you know, more morale goes down. People are like, oh, they don't carry that anymore. But it does give you space to hold more things, newer things, better things, and uh, cheaper employees. So those are the basic actions of the game. You'll continue those rounds over and over and over again until someone is finally valuated at $1 billion. At that point, you will finish everything in the round, and then the person with the highest valuation is the winner. Now, I mentioned polyominoes, but I will say two things about the polyomino aspect of this game. First of all, it's a minor aspect, in a sense, because you are you're building code. I mean, it's it's there, but it's like if you like, I like polyomino games. I would say, well, do you like economic games? Do you like everything else in this? That's true. That's true. That's not the core of it, but it is important. It's, it's important. like a very vital part. Right, but it's also I find it's straight up for me the most annoying part of the game. 
I like it. Mm -hmm. But I have to take the card. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, I'm taking this card and put the pieces on because I cannot do it in my head very That's well. That's what that board in front of you is for. It's not good it's enough. still not good enough for you. It okay. works for me. I, I, I'm able to kind of manipulate. But it is, it is like a step removed. We're like, is that... That's correct. Yeah. It's like the same skills you need for cross stitching, like counted cross stitch. If you're like, how many squares in? This squares up. Yeah, get good at cross stitching. Scrub. Well, how, again, how often have you cross stitched again, if, in your if, life? If you're well, never, <laughs> if you're not allowed to take the card and put it in front of you, I couldn't live with that. I would say, okay, I'm going to do this on my board. Yeah. But depending on where you're sitting, um, if you're sitting upside down, I, I don't know. Happily, when someone else does one, you're like, okay. I need two reds, a blue, and a yellow. Also, <laughs> it's easy I, to copy. I yes. was so excited one turn because I was like, oh, I can complete a product. And then I realized it was the white spaces, but the black spaces looked like they made more of a shape because the white spaces were all kind of on the outside. And I was like, oops, I can't actually make that. So like the inverse of the black and the white just messed my brain. It was minor, minor. But I do like that it's not just polyomino shapes. They're actually a resource in the game. Mm -hmm. You spend them to do different things. Um, sometimes you get extra ones, and I'm a big fan. One of my favorite parts of this game is the the end of turn kind of production. Like I hire employees because they bring something with them, and then every turn they give you something. And it does, that's a little to me. It's a little thematic. Like Wendy's like, I have a great idea. I'm like, I will hire her, and hopefully you will then keep producing other stuff. I think the thematicness of this game is probably one of the best selling points of it. I feel like it fits the theme really well. You have to expand your headquarters. You can hold more stuff. You can get more employees. They're going to write code for you. They're just going to keep writing code. You can sell some of that, get money so you can pay your employees, or you can make a really cool product all yourself. So like, I just feel like there's so many things. You can poach employees. You can buy them. You know, you can hire them, and they, they have less hiring bonus costs if they like your business more. Like, I just think that everything in their rule-wise, makes sense thematically. And I think that that's cool. I agree with that. And, and like you said, Tom, when you hire someone, they bring a, an instant bonus. Sweet. I might hire someone just for that. I've done it many times. Right. And then their recurring income thing is like a, a crummy little like two-piece block. And you're like, I will use that to pay for my upkeep cost of the other things. Uh, the, the language of the actions is also thematic, which... Sometimes, like, if you understand it, if you understand the vernacular they're going for, it does make sense. But it's also a little bit, uh, I wouldn't mind if the, the names of the actions were just a little bit more straightforward, some of the terminology in the game. That being said, I like it's kind of, uh, it is kind of a poignant, it's like a, it's like a biting commentary almost on Silicon Valley. It is, a little. A little bit, right? The, oh, your employees who have been around and loyal to your company for a while... Uh, have earned you all of this fantastic valuation for your company. Also, they're asking for raises, so I'm going to let them go and hire cheap new people. See you later, yeah. Wisenack. Right. I mean, that's that's really it. It, it, it. I don't see anywhere in the rules that say you can't fire your founder of the company. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I, I think I, I wondered about that myself, but I, I was yeah. too. I was too. I was like, "That's me. I can't fire myself." But it's the Wozniak thing. Like that works. <laughs> it 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 is funny to me. Now, one of the things is the game gives you a lot of different actions, which I like. You know, you're putting code out, doing code. A minor issue I have with this game is I feel like it's one action too few on your turn. Now, some people might say, oh, I like that. I, you know, it keeps it tight. But one of the actions, for example, is just buying a piece of code, and that feels like such a sucker action. But you have to do it sometimes. Sure. Especially if you, because it's usually a better action just to hire someone who brings that piece of code with them. Yes. That's almost always the better action. And yet I find myself doing it. And also, taking a card that gives you money and another action feels amazing. I, I felt like you should, if you go to the buy code, but you should be able to buy two pieces. I don't know. I just felt sometimes like, oh, that's all I'm doing on my turn. I, I don't know. I, I don't feel that strongly, but I just felt like I wanted to do a lot more on each turn. Well, if they had Costco for code, then you could go down to Costco, buy two code for the price of one. Code Co, baby. Buy it in bulk. Oh, yeah. I feel like you guys were set for that joke, but all right. I'd never heard of, thought of it before, but I, you get three actions a turn, which feels like kind of a lot, especially because, I, now I'm going to get into some of the issues that I have with the game, and you kind of touched on this, that the blocks of code are interesting, the little, okay, make the shape over there, until they kind of slow down the flow of the game, because the game is pretty good flow, and then it kind of halts for a little bit. I think at that point, when someone's like, hold on, 
Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There. I need to take yeah. the cards and do it. It's a, it yeah. stops the game. But even yeah, even if you're taking the card, you're still like, okay, hold on. And there's not that many combinations, so it feels like here's a cute idea, but in reality, there's about two different ways that you can make that shape. Maybe three, right? You know, a few little variations. I think it would have been smoother if it was just a normal gather ingredients and fulfill a recipe. This card costs two yellow, a blue, and a green. You know, it, it for me, doesn't have that much difference. That poly The fact that it's polyaminos and could slow down the game, it doesn't add more than just being like, yeah, here's the resource cost, I get the card. It might if they had single blocks. The fact that they don't have single blocks it makes it really, really hard. makes filling those things. And they also make them really weird shapes. And the fact that you have to match someone exactly, like you could both be going for the same thing, and then someone gets there first, and they're like, whoo, I did it this way, and you're like, oh, I can do it, but I can't do it that way. That, so you, that doesn't bother me as much doing that. I, really? I kind of like the idea that, though that's the way it was built. Like, you're the one who figured it out. That's why I'm like, oh, I'm just like going to copy it. Right? Smartphones look like smartphones because someone decided it was that yeah, way. Yeah, maybe. They mm -hmm. didn't, you know, make them something else. Yeah. I guess it makes sense. But, I'm sorry. I was going to say, my thought, or like my issue with this was more of the interaction that happened when you're producing those products. And I think a lot, it has to do with just the way that the scoring is not that interesting and the way the products come out is not that interesting for me because um, people are going to get almost as many victory points as you are from building those products if they're the second person to do it and then they just get this ongoing benefit the whole time. And so it's, there's so much motivation to do what someone else has done so they don't get those points and I feel like in a two player game it really accentuated that. Of as soon as Chris built something, that very next round, I want to build that exact same thing and if I can't, then Chris is just getting points. But also, if I do, then Chris is just not getting points. So it's like an interesting back and forth that I feel like I didn't love. It's exasperated even more in a four-player game a bit because I'm like, well, who's winning? Mm. I need to steal. I have to steal their thing. Right. When when it comes to anything with in in the world of making products, theme wise, you want to be first or you want to be best. That's what they always say. And in this game, you want to be second. Almost. Second is best, I guess. First is yeah. good if no one takes it from you, which at the beginning of a game it might not happen, but after a while people are like, I have to take that from you. So they're taking it from you. I almost wish first would get maybe a smaller bonus, but then it never goes away. I, th this game, it's, there's a bit of take that, really. Yeah. And in a four-player game, I'm like, oh, why are you still mine? Chris, this is more points. You should be hitting his. And that feels a little out of place in this game, like the, the, the mm -hmm. whining, like, I'm not winning, he's winning, take his thing. It's a little odd. I don't dislike the game because of it, but I can see that people wouldn't enjoy that part. And, and in a two-player game, it's kind of exasperated on the other side of you're getting income of points every round. I have to copy you. I just have to because it doesn't make sense. If I instead create a new product and then you copy that later without me copying you, you're still just netting more points. Uh, the other thing I think is weird about this, I feel like there's fiddly rules here and there. The, the end of round income feels kind of cool. And yeah. then, but also you're sitting there just counting up a lot of things, getting this up. Now I have to pay my upkeep costs. I got to count up a lot of things. Did I get all my code right? Now I have to pay some of that code to keep my products going. It's, it, it could have been smoother, I think. It, it's the same issue I have with the fact that it's polyaminos instead of just like basic ingredients to fill things. You're like, oh, that's mm -hmm. clever, but requires a little bit more fiddling. It requires a little bit more counting up things every single time. I think part of that is a graphic design issue because the instant stuff and the ongoing stuff, sure, it has a little symbol at the top so that you know the difference, but when you're counting up things, I wish that they were different colors because then I started double counting stuff and I was like, oh wait, that's an instant benefit, let me uncount it. Um, which is weird because other graphic design things in this are great. The way that headquarters is set up, yeah, I like that a lot. I really mm -hmm. like that. So there's some really good graphic design, and then there's some really lacking graphic design. And so it's it's just interesting. What would you give it? I'm coming down, I think, at a six. I enjoy it. I enjoy parts of it. But th the amount of fiddliness that there is in the upkeep and in the trying to design the products and the the just how harsh it feels when someone takes that second uh, tile of each of each product type, 
it, it keeps me from wanting to come back to it, despite the fact I find it very clever. I find the humor in it. I enjoy that. Uh, I also, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I also feel like for the amount of fiddliness it is, I would have expected the game to been a little bit more tighter financially. Like, you can get to the point where you're just comfortable. It's one action to grab a card that's worth like $30. You're like, cool, I'm not really stressed about firing employees off at some point in the game. And maybe that's thematic. Maybe once your company's set, you know, you can, just, you can say, all right, cool, I'll just keep everyone on as long as they provide me some good stuff. But uh, I, I think it's an odd, it's a strange brew of these, all these ingredients that I like, but in a total package that I think is okay. So it's a six for me. Okay. It's also a six for me. Um, and I think that you saying that just like there's so many pieces in it that I like and thematically I like it. But then when you put it all together, I think it's that mix of the take that. And then really the way that those products come out, the way that they score, I think that's the core of what I don't like. Like I don't mind the fiddliness of the income, um, the graphic design changes. I think that could help. But I enjoy the actions. I enjoy the game until the way that the scores happen. And I just... I don't love it. Well, another piece of fiddliness is when you put out a new product, you're like, okay, I gotta go find the two tiles that tie <laughs> that to match that product. It exactly. That's a weird decision to me. I agree, that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how they could have done it. Maybe they could just put it on the card, but I agree, the game has problems. But one problem that you had, I actually like, which is the feeling comfortable. I'm okay with that in the game. I don't need to. I don't need to have to suck my belt in every game. Um, I like having lots of money in this game, but I also did. I sit there and be like, man, these employees are making too much money. Hmm. And then I feel guilty about them. firing a virtual employee. Um, but I felt zero guilt. I enjoyed the theme a lot. I thought there was a lot of good things. I'm giving it a seven. I think it's for me. It was just fun. It felt different. There's a lot of these Euro games out there, and I always. They usually delve into past with the merchants in the Mediterranean and stuff. This is Silicon Valley, and I'm much more interested in modern themes. Mm -hmm. So the theme brings me in a bit, and I also just like the, the variety of actions I had. And even though I complained about building the things, I did spend a good chunk of the game doing that. I'm like, oh, um, oh when it wasn't my turn, you're taking your turn, I'm sitting there trying to figure out which one of these I can do. Please don't build the one. I finally figured out how to build it. <laughs> I, I swear, if you build that, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. But... Um, yeah, I don't know where this one will end up with a lot of people. I definitely would say after this, is this is certainly maybe one you would want to try before you, you buy it. But that's Silicon Valley. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. We have a startup that you can invest in. See us. <laughs>